Good morning. Today is the 7th of June, it's Trinity Sunday. And I've come into church this morning just because it's now we're getting to that state. Hopefully we're moving towards being able to return to church soon. So I thought it'd be just nice to record my talk here in church. Um, the reading for this morning is, uh, the, the New Testament reading is 2 Corinthians 13, 1 to 13. So I'm just going to read that to you now. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a great division in our household, um, and it's a very serious issue of conflict. It's the big question in life. I know there's, there's some of you will have this question in your own house, households: is do you like Marmite or not? I'm not a particularly big fan of Marmite, but my wife Alison loves it, and there's a great divide. And I can live with that. I can live with Marmite. Live, and allow Alison to live with Marmite and have her Marmite in the kitchen cupboard. That's fine. But a, a product arrived just the other day, which I was not too pleased about. It's a, well, just a bit of background. One of my favourite things, while well, it's not Marmite, one of my favourite things is peanut butter. I love peanut butter. It's a really lovely thing, a very delightful, wonderful thing. Anyway, I found in the kitchen cupboard this week, something quite shocking. You won't believe it. It is this. It is peanut butter with Marmite. Now I ask you, what sort of product is that? Who would want to sully their peanut butter with Marmite? I ask you. Now I only jest. I only jest. It's it's just it's a bit of fun within our household where we talk about the, the issues of marmite. So it's one of those things, do you like it or not? There's no halfway house. But whilst I tell you or whilst I jest about that, we live in a world at the moment which is riddled with conflict and division. We've seen in America this week the, the issues around George Floyd and the and the conflict over race and discrimination. And, and we are live in a world and we are invited to, to, have, uh, to know what to think. We have to think about how we respond to these situations. And so today I'd just like to just reflect, first of all, on the Trinity, but using the idea of the Trinity as a way to think about how we live as humanity. And I think when we start to unpack our theology of the, of, of the Trinity, our understanding of God, to grow in our understanding of God means we'll grow in our understanding and how we live in this world with one another. And what I'm going to do, I mean, Trinity, Trinity for, for many tr preachers, it's, it's a dreaded service, it's a dreaded su subject to have to preach about. But I believe Trinity is a gift to us today. It's a gift that reminds us of what God is like. It teaches us the theology of God, and through that, we discover the truth about how we live as human beings. And I want to talk about two different things. So I like almost like two sides of a coin that will hopefully lead us to that place of peace that we long. And the first side of that coin is, is the coin of, of, of a united community. And Trinity, first of all, teaches us about being a united community. And we look at the Godhead, we look at the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. It is an intimate relationship of, of unity. And that's one of the great gifts of Christianity to the world of religion. So often God is seen as a God who is separate and there is only one God. And we see, and yes, we believe there is only one God. But the great, tr great, the great gift of the Trinity is it's, it's, it provides us an image of what God is like, that God is relationship, God is love. St Paul tells us in that reading we've had this morning that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is what we seek in our lives. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is something that we long 
to receive. And what does that mean? Well, at the heart of the relationship of God is that God is love. St. John tells us that, that God is love. Those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. This is the very heart of God, the very nature, the essence of God. But we also see that expressed in the life of Jesus through his life and death and resurrection. And we see in Jesus grace. There's a wonderful image of grace, that grace is the giving, the self-giving love of God. So not only do we understand that God is love, but we see that poured out in the life of Jesus as the image of grace, the unconditional love that is always and always everywhere. And then we finally see it in the, in the whole sense of the Holy Spirit, in that we are called to be in fellowship. It's no good being separate. This is not love. To be love, we have to live together. And what we are invited as Christians, if we want to be followers of Christ, if we want to live in a relationship with God, that we have to live in relationship with one another. There is no way around it, because this is the very heart of God. That when we live together, we are called to a live in a united community. Now, I think this is a great gift for us as a world, because so often in life, we want to live separate lives. Look at the way we've lived and coped for the last few weeks and months. And actually, some of us have actually quite enjoyed being separate and having to meet other people in a human way that's quite nice. But that is not the way of God. The way of God is to live together, live in community, and we cannot separate ourselves out. Donald Trump will tell us that the only way to peace is to separate things, to build walls and, and, to, and to make ourselves separate from one another. This is not lasting peace. This is not peace you see in America. This is war because it's about how people have been divided and treated differently and what we as, as a Christian community is that if we long for a relationship with God, that we have also have to long for a relationship with those who are different from us. We have to long for a relationship with those from other cultures and other nations. We have to live in community. I believe this is a great gift, a great gift for humanity, that we take our faith seriously. Our relationship with God will lead to a relationship with one another, a united community. Now, the other side of the coin, of course, is the image of, of, divini of, of, of diversity. Diversity. And, uh, and the Trinity is, is an image of not only of unity and community, but also a diverse community. And that's the great gift of the Trinity, again, is that there is a different images of God. So often in the church we've used the Trinity and said there's only this way. We can only expect, experience God in this particular way, in this particular box. Again, we've brought division ourselves by using these theologies wrong. But the Trinity is a great gift because it teaches us about divinity and diversity. And not just in threefold way. We're invited to open our eyes and to see God in many, many different ways. Now, if I asked you all to tell me what your experience of God is, you would tell me something different because you all experience God in different ways. This is the diversity of our faith. When you look at the scriptures, we look at the Bible and there are an immense number of ways that we see it's so many different images of God, whether it's shepherd or whether it's a lamb, whether it's a king or whether it's a servant. We see a diverse image of God in our scriptures. And we're invited to search for God out in the world. And to look for God in, its di in God's diversity. When we look for love, we see a myriad, and a myriad of places and ways that we can see God and experience God. J.B. Priestley. My mum used to tell me about J.B. Priestley. And she said she, one of her favourite books was this book by J.B. Priestley. And he said, in there, he said that um, he was on a train. I've told you this, I'm sure, if you've heard this before. There was a train. And he says that, that when he opens his eyes, when he opened his eyes and looked around a, tra a crowded train carriage and saw all the people, he saw the face of Jesus 
in each one. We are invited to search for God in our world. The Trinity gives us an image that God is a, 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 a diverse God, a, faith, a God where we can find God in a multitude of ways. And that is a great gift for us. Because as we open our eyes to the God's presence, we see God in those who are different from us. We see God in those who have a different colour of skin or a different uh, culture, who come from a different religion. We can find God in a multitude of ways. And the call of Christ, if we want to live as a united community, is that we have to celebrate the diversity of humanity. What a gift it is when we start to think about our understanding of God, but how we can live as human beings. I believe this is a pathway to peace. In the, in the uh, Rublov image of the icon of the Trinity, which is that, I haven't got it here with me, but there's an image, that, the famous painting, a famous icon of the Trinity, and it's the invitation of Abraham by the three visitors in Genesis. There's an image of, it's a circle, the three, the three faces of God are, dwell in a circle as they gather and their invitation is for Abraham to join their circle and we too are invited in. Rublov paints it in a way that says come, come into this circle, dwell with us. The invitation for Christians and for all people is to dwell in peace and the Trinity invites us. He invites us to live in a, in a way of a united community and celebrating diversity. I think if we can live in such a way, we will bring peace to our world. May we pray today. We pray for those who are in the midst of conflict. We pray for those who are struggling and standing up for justice and freedom and equality. And today we pray for peace in our world today. Amen.